The second T at surface level is very obvious. It's training. Now, you might say training. Come on, Ranjay, give me a break. And a lot of coaches say what happens in training is more important than what happens on the field. But I think there's a lot more to that. You will see some of these coaches obsessed with training. The legendary coach Bill Walsh from the San Francisco 49ers called it standards of performance. Very high standards of performance. Coach Nick Saban of Alabama calls it the process. The word deliberate practice comes from a, a gentleman named Anders who developed this idea that there is practice, which is rote repetition, and then there is deliberate practice. And deliberate practice is the idea that you are very intentional about your practice. You're not just mindlessly saying, okay, I gotta go in there and just do my 10,000 reps. No, it's very intentional about asking yourself, what am I doing? How am I doing it? What is working? What's not working? Looking at feedback, looking at possibilities. So you're much more deliberate or intentional in your practice. This is training that is not just about rote repetition, but it's with a Kaizen learning mindset. Kaizen and deliberate practice are closely connected ideas, but I would say Kaizen goes a little further even because Kaizen is the idea of continuous improvement. It's an obsession with getting better. So it's a never ending process of glass is half empty. In the case of Nick Saban, you know, they win a tournament and he comes in and says, get ready for practice. There's something in psychology called the post pellet pause. If you give mice a task to do and they do the task, you give them a pellet, and as a reward, they take it easy for a while. You know, then they come back and want to do it again. For a lot of great coaches, there's no post pellet pause. You win a game, that's okay. What did you do? What could you have done better? You lose a game, what could you have done better? A mindset of continuous improvement. Individualized attention becomes very important. Going back to Bill Walsh, you know, how he coached two quarterbacks, Joe Montana and Steve Young. Very different. Joe Montana was very structured and he needed to loosen up and allow himself to use his instincts more. Steve Young was very instinctive, needed to be reined in and said, you need to bring in some structure into your game. So there's a lot of deliberate practice, setting high expectations. If you look at modern day coaches, there's a huge em emphasis on physical and mental training. There's the physical conditioning component of training, and there's the mental development and resilience and the ability to stay focused in the zone, in the moment, tune out everything else. Pete Carroll in the Seattle Seahawks and his psychologist, Michael Gervais, you know, bringing in mindfulness training to the uh, players, saying, we want you to do mindfulness training. Phil Jackson did that also with the Chicago Bulls. So you see a lot of them leaning in to ways to still and calm the mind. Let's think about training in the business context. How intentional are we in the way we develop and train our people? Training becomes this kind of one-off thing where you put somebody in a room when they arrive for about a week and they learn about their benefits and about their ID card, about the you know, security requirements and the do's and don'ts of expenses and so forth. To what degree are we helping them train to do their job? Or are we presuming they were trained for that before they arrived? To what degree can we engage in intentional training? And to what degree do we engage in after action reviews as the army they call it, right? How intentional are we? My own sense is that, you know, sometimes in some organizations, training becomes a checkbox, as opposed to really drilling into saying, how do I help develop this person for the job they will do next? If I'm promoting you, how am I helping you get ready for the job you're about to do?